Is this written? Yes. It's the word of God, isn't it? But we see Enoch translated. We see Elisha went up to heaven in a chariot of fire. If you study on this and you think on this, Moses wanted to see God face to face, didn't he? He wanted to look at God's face, Gary. He wanted to look God eye to eye. God said, Moses, thou knowest that no man can look upon me and live. Look at my face and live. You can't do it. Why? Because God's glory is too great. The God that we serve, the omnipresent God, the God that sits on the throne in heaven, that has always been and always will be, he was before heaven, he was before the angels, he was before this church, he'll be after this church. He's the author and the finisher of my faith. He's the king of heaven. You can't look upon me and live. He said, but I'll tell you what I'll do for you. I'm going to hide you in the cleft of the rock. I think, can you, in your mind's eye, I want you to think about this. God said, I'm going to let you catch a glimpse of me. You really want to see me? I'm going to let you see my hinder parts, and I'm going to pass by you. And he hit him. Now think about this. He got close enough to God that God was going to talk to him. God's not a respecter of person, is he? So that tells me if I want to get close to God and I talk to God enough, God's going to give me a glimpse of him. You know that? If I need Jesus, if I need, if I need an uplifting and I need to see God, God's going to put me in a place where I can catch a glimpse of heaven. Amen. And he put him in the cleft of the rock and God walked by. And what happened when Moses come off the mountain? His face shined like the face of an angel. He had a celestial shine. Shining off it, they had to wrap his face because people feared him. My goodness. What a lofty idea. What a lofty idea that I could see God. Ain't that something that God would care enough about me just to give me a glimpse of his glory. To give what some preachers call a little heaven to go to heaven in. A little peace of mind. How many in this place has ever needed a little peace of mind? What a day and what an hour that we are in. Who needs a peace of mind tonight? I want peace of mind, don't you? Who wants a surety? I, I want assurance, don't you? Why do you keep assurance on your vehicle? Because you don't know what's going to happen. Why do you pray? Why do you stay in the straight and narrow? Why are you on such a lofty journey? Because you need assurance. Because you don't know what's going to happen to you. Children, you don't know what's going to happen. Mom and dad, you don't know what's going to happen. The horrors of our mind can become reality in the twinkling of an eye. But it's so far away from us, isn't it? Becomes such a lofty idea that the devil says it'll never happen. I'm not here to preach doom and gloom, but a reality and a fact. Bad things are what happen to good people. Bad things happen to bad people. It rains on the just and the unjust alike. Just because you're going through problems, don't think that God doesn't love you. You're going through problems because it's common to man. It happens to all of us because sin came into the world is why there is trouble. It's why there is sorrow. It's not because you've done anything wrong. God does not punish people that way. But we need assurance. Everybody wants to get close to God. But not everybody wants to go on the journey. Everybody's saved. Get on Facebook. Everybody's going to heaven. Everybody loves Jesus. Everybody believes in God. I seen a post the other day. It said that just, I'm a good person and I believe in God. Well, let me tell you something. That might be a fact. You might be a good person and you might believe in God. But the fact of the matter is, without the cross, 
without salvation and without being born again, without this lofty idea of a journey that we have to walk, you will never, ever step into the gates of heaven and live with the Lord. You will not. This is why I ask you to pray for me. I got people I want to see saved. When Enoch was walking with God, one step, one footstep was here. And the next one was there. The Bible said to me that he was not. He was not found. He was gone. In the twinkling of an eye. Was he walking alone? No, he was with God. And I thought today and God spoke to me. He said, listen. He said, his flesh and blood did not inherit the kingdom of heaven. His translation, though maybe a little different than ours, his body still was not found. But though he had a theoretical, if you would, Jordan crossing, one foot in this world and the next foot out of it. And I thought, Lord, I want to make it home. I have a lot of fears in my heart. I have a lot of unsure. See, the problem with us, we always want to act like we're so big and we're so strong in God that we fool ourselves and we end up falling. There's nothing wrong with admitting. Don't just admit it, own it. We're human. There's a lot of things about what's inside this book I'm not, I'm not looking forward to. I'm not looking forward to losing my parents. I'm not looking forward to dying. There's something about it, isn't there? The unknown, the lofty idea of I'm here and then the next minute I'm not. The, Brother Riley, the vapor, like a vapor in the wind or like a flower that cometh up in one day and it's gone in the same. What an idea. Is it? Has that fear ever crept into your mind? Can we be honest? Everybody that's sitting here, don't be afraid to be honest. That's, this is where we're going here. How many's ever had that into your heart? Has that ever crossed your mind? Has it ever crossed your mind? The thought, what death's going to be like? fear Jesus was in the garden and he prayed didn't he he knew death was coming great sorrow great drops of blood am I correct if there be another way let this cup pass from me but nevertheless thy will be done 